up guys welcome to your seventh tutorial last time we talked about brush modes and this time we're going to be talking about fills and gradients now as you know as it what a fill is is it fills whatever selection you have with your foreground color so just pick a foreground color and fill it like so you can also fill selections that are shapes so say you wanted to fill this, just go to your paint bucket tool, click it, and fill it. Now you have a couple options how to fill items. First is just to grab the paint bucket tool and click and fill it. Another option you have is to go up here on your main menu bar, click edit, fill, and click OK. And the last option that you have is to hold down the shift key and press backspace then just press OK and your item will fill now as you see up here at the sub tools menu you have a couple choices foreground and pattern and when you're using basic fills always pick foreground to fill it with your foreground color and as you know the modes that we talked about last time the opacity is all the same and this tolerance and all these other checkboxes right here comes into play when you're filling photographs and not just basic images so once we start filling photographs we'll talk about those but next I want to talk to you guys about the pattern fill you can also fill shapes with basic patterns as you see when you click the pattern this little box pops up right here you can go select any of the patterns from that Photoshop is preset select one and you can fill your shape with it now the other tool under the paint bucket drop down list is the gradient tool and what a gradient is is just the fading of colors it fades the foreground color into the background color in this case red and white and all you have to do is click and drag and it's pretty easy to see how it works and right here are all of the shapes such as a diamond circle and some other ones as well right here you have all the preset colors that Photoshop has if you want to use any of those preset colors you can and of course the modes and opacity same as any other tool so you have all these preset colors or you can make a basic two gradient but what if you wanted a custom gradient to do that you would double click this gradient box on the toolbar right here and this brings up the custom custom gradient box and you can add as many colors to your gradient as you want to change the colors you simply cl click these things called color stops and as you can see your color selector box clicks up and you can change the color from here but if you want another color all you would have to do is click under here until your finger cursor pops up and click add stop as you can see another stop pops up so let's say we want to make a red, white, and blue gradient. Just go to one of your color stops and double click it. Select red. For the middle one, we'll select white. And for your last color stop right here, we'll select the blue color. As you can see, red, white, and blue is now selected. So press OK. And as you can see in your main gradient box at the sub toolbar, you have a red, white, and blue fill gradient. Now just simply click and drag anywhere on the screen. And as you can see, we have a custom red, white, and blue gradient. This is a way to make a custom gradient with as many colors you like. Now the last thing I need to talk to you about is something called a custom noise gradient. So go back to your custom box and under the gradient type you can see we have solid selected you can also pick a noise now when you do this Photoshop 
gives you a random band of colors. Now I've yet, to, and you can always click randomize to get another band. And I've yet to figure out how this is useful in any way, but it makes some cool designs sometimes anyway. So, so just click OK, click the shape that you want, simply drag, and as you can see, instead of a simple gradient, Photoshop gives you a wide band of colors. So if anyone knows why this is actually useful, comment me or let me know because I'm stumped on this one, but it looks cool either way. So now that we learned how to use the fill to tool and gradient tool, in the next topic we're going to be getting into some cool stuff such as restoring old photographs and how to remove sections of an image. Now as always, if you missed anything I went over today, you can go to my website, thenewboston.com. And have a step-by-step -step instruction on everything we learn. Thank you.